We want to dwell on this for the time being, though, on Newcastle United. Never afraid to talk about Newcastle. Why? Because it's a great club. It's going places. It's under new ownership, of course. Ashley's long gone. The Saudis are in charge. And a man we like and rate highly, Eddie Howe, is at the top of the club. But what's the expectation of uh, Newcastle United at this time? Simon, last night, Newcastle go to Crystal Palace and they lose. And Palace, Palace have a night to remember because it's a decent win yeah. Newcastle had a big travelling support as always they go back up the road and they must be pondering this morning what is the expectation of Newcastle United say going into next season under Eddie Howe now before, I'll put that out because we love it when Newcastle fans come to air and they will this morning of that I'm quite sure 03717 what is the expectation of uh, Newcastle United going into next season under Eddie Howe I want to hear from you on that Eddie was asked uh, post-match last night what that defeat did last night in terms of their European ambition I think it was always going to go to the end um, we're in the mix we're fighting we're not at our best. I think that's clear um, from today. But we need to be at our best at home on Saturday. And finally, a top six, top seven finish would still be a really good season, wouldn't it? From from what you've had in terms of injuries and, and the problems you've had to overcome. It would be. But it's difficult to see that right this second where we're in pain after delivering a product that wasn't acceptable really by our standards. And the lads have been so good in terms of giving everything. But that that quality was, I, th I think, in there today, but um, the quality of our performance certainly wasn't. So Eddie fronting up, as he always does, Simon. But, but um, Murphy called it, didn't he, yesterday? Yeah, Danny called it, mm -hmm. and he was right to do yeah, so. Was, I yeah. texted him last night to tell him just that. Um, the seventh, Newcastle United, on 50 points. They should up, they should pick up three at the weekend when they play Sheffield United, with all due respect, due respect to Sheffield yeah. United. But can you answer that for me? Right now, Looking at this from afar, after what they did last season, presumably they punched above their weight last season. Yeah. Because now they're at where they're at. Where are they at? What's the expectation? Well, I think the expectation has to be balanced with a with a degree of reality. Um, you know, there's it's undeniable that they got this remarkable bounce off the back of Eddie Howe coming in, picking up in January. They lost, to, I think, in an FA Cup to Cambridge or somebody at home. And then they moved them through the gears, bought some decent players, got themselves into a situation where they survived relegation at a canter, took that momentum and all that good feeling into the following season, bought some decent players. Trippier was a brilliant acquisition, irrespective of my observations about why he came there in the first place. Not true. Other players came in and really upped the ante and they had a great season. This season was always going to be a challenge because they had a European competition, which was always going to put them in a difficult position in terms of squad utilisation and the quality of players and I think that if they finish 7th or 8th it'll be comparable to the second season that Man City had when they got but they got Sheikh Mansour's money um, so I'm not entirely sure that people should be losing their minds over the fact that Newcastle haven't landed back in the top four I never thought they were going to I thought it was silly and ridiculous of Piercy to suggest that Newcastle were going to win the league. Stuart suggested that at the beginning <laughs> right, of the season. Right. You picked them to be in the top four, top six again, didn't I you? I did indeed, yeah. And I thought it would be a difficult a difficult ask for them to achieve so, and so it's proven to be. I think if Newcastle finished seventh or eighth in this league, or even sixth, mm -hmm. I think they've had a pretty good season. And I think there's still the building blocks in there to give them another spin of the wheel and to see if they can get themselves back into Europe. The, yeah. the brand of football that they play, they've been disadvantaged by... Some purchases like Tonelli, which was which is on people like Dan Ashworth, that have not necessarily played out because of other things off the field. Callum Wilson's been injured. Every club's had these challenges, so let's not get into what they haven't been able to have, right? I think that Newcastle still are a compelling proposition. I think there's still much more right about Newcastle than there is wrong. But they're at a fork in the road, right? I don't I don't think they're at a fork in the road. I think that they have stabilised themselves as one of the top sides in the division, and now we'll see if they can kick on in the third season. And if they can't kick on in the third or third and a half season that Eddie will have had, yeah. then I think that there'll be a passing of the ways. I want, I want to talk to you in a moment about Dan Ashworth. Um, uh, Manchester United want him. They'll get him. Uh, yeah. Newcastle haven't quite released him from uh, somewhere in his garden at the moment. Huh. Sean's a big Newcastle fan. Sean, good morning. What's your take on it? Good morning, lads. Pleasure to be on the show as always. Morning. Thanks, Sean. You're welcome. Where are you at with it? Are you at a fork in the road? Uh, to be honest, I've, I've been on and I've said that the players weren't playing for Eddie Howe a while ago and I'm biting the bullet, to be fair, and I was totally wrong. They're all playing for him, but obviously results aren't going our way. 
Um, we've had a tough season with a lot of injuries. And I think, obviously, anything in the top seven is a good season for this season. Obviously, first season of the Champions League in 20 years. No one knew, knew what to expect from it, to be fair. And the quality of the squad beyond the first team isn't the greatest, but it can only get better. Oh, that sounds optimistic. Sean, thanks so much for that. And it's a good call. Kevin, another Newcastle fan. Do you share Sean's view that, yeah, six or seven is about, is about right uh, and we crack on with Eddie? Are you of that view, Kevin? Yeah. Good morning, guys. Good morning. I think sixth six position is still achievable. But what concerned me about last night's performance against Crystal Palace is that there didn't seem to be the motivation and desire like we had against Spurs. And that worries me. Those guys should have come out there full of confidence and got the result, and they didn't. And that, that's, that's happened a couple of times. Every time we have a break, we come back very cold and we get beat by teams that we should always beat. And OK, that's, that's but, but by and large, though, Kevin, if you end up 6th or 7th, as Simon says, yeah, we'll take it and we'll move on. Yeah, and I think there'll be new players coming in and I think we will punch our weight next season. Yes, definitely. Kevin, good call. Thank you for that. I mean, they, they, they buy into Eddie, don't they? Well, because they've got a little reason not to. Sure. I mean, you can get some... I don't think they should be forever eternally grateful for the feelings that they had towards Mike Ashley and they don't have them towards the new ownership and Eddie Howe. And then, then it doesn't, and these Middle Eastern guys didn't come in so they could play with football and uh, be peripheral partners in the Premier League. They came in, I suspect, to be a dominant force. Hmm. But if you finish in the Champions League spots and the following seasons you solidify yourself in the top six and then you're going to go again economically with some transfers... Then why would you change it? What's materially wrong at this moment in time? You went—I know you went out on tiny margins, but they were tiny margins. They went out of those Champions League. Yeah, true. A dodgy penalty against PSG yeah. away brought them back into the game. I think that Eddie Howe deserves—and you very rarely hear me say this about football managers—deserves another spin of the wheel. Yeah. To, um, and again, that it, it kind of flies in the face of my view, Jim, that he doesn't get used to the Holy Grail. But I don't think Newcastle will win in the Premier League in the next half a decade anyway. In spite of what Amanda well, you know, says. You know, with the best respect, they might win a cup, but they don't win a Premier League anytime soon, are they? Listen, the, the boardroom is your kind of playground when you're at Palace. How, how, mm -hmm. do you put, how do you put a value on those in the boardroom? Newcastle, we know, are going to start the interview process for the next sporting director this week. They, they, they're, they're seeking a successor to Dan Ashworth. He's currently on gardening leave and is set to, to head to Manchester United. We know that. Newcastle want around £15 million. Plus a further five million in add-ons for, for Ashworth. Him. Good for him. United are proposing compensation around two million. Oh, United can blow out their backsides. He's, he works for Newcastle, so United want to come along and take somebody else's product, and take someone else's intellectual capital and someone else's vision. They want the vision because the vision's arrived, and they can pay for it. So if I'm Newcastle, absolutely. Absolutely. Sit down, shut up, Dan. You'll do as we tell you. You're under contract. Man United, you'll pay what we ask you. And we'll ask you for something that we are shooting for the stars on. We might get the moon on the way up. And ultimately, you'll pay what we decide. Otherwise, the fella can sit on the sidelines and he can do whatever he wants to do. Because that's the position Newcastle hopefully have put themselves in. Newcastle took Ashworth. Man United could have taken Ashworth. But they didn't, did they? They, so weren't, they so waited for someone else to have the vision. So let me get this right. You would do what Newcastle are doing. No, we're holding out for 15 mil. Damn right. Would, would you do what Manchester United are doing? Nah, 2 million. Well, it, yeah, of course I would, because I'd want to pay as little as I possibly could. But Even I would, though you rate the guy highly and you want him. Sure. You've identified him but, and you want him. But contractually, United will see, potentially, that if there's a release clause in the contract of an executive, which is perplexing, but let's just say there is, or isn't, right, because it has breached their intellectual capital in the way contracts are constructed with other people outside of managers and players, if there isn't a release clause, then you're hostage to fortune. You're do as you're bloody well told, Man United. You don't have control of this situation, and neither does Dan Ashworth. Dan Ashworth has a fixed-term contract with Newcastle, lasts X amount of time. Manchester United want him now. You want your revolution, Ineos? Get your hand in your pocket. You buy these bloody players at 50, 60, 70 million quid. You spent 1.7 billion pound net on transfers over the last 10 years. Get some intellectual capital and that will save you a few bob. OK, well, Dan remains in his garden and the talks go on. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.